I'm just going to take you guys with me in spirit. I've been thinking about the last time that I drove my mother to chemotherapy. About four or five weeks before she died. And... Hmm. Yeah, just thinking about that moment. And, like, really deep. I was driving my car. I picked her up. And... It was... It was pretty early. It wasn't, like, extremely early in the morning. But it was kind of... It was fairly early. I would say about 7.30, maybe 8. And... Um, the sun was out. It was cold. I remember it was, it was cold. Um, but, like, I was watching her. Um, we had small conversation. Just, I think, honestly, just because of the heaviness, you know, like, of where we were at in our reconciliation in that moment, like, um, we were already having very deep talks, and in the moments when it was, like, silent, there was a lot of thinking and quietness and prayer, for sure. Like, I know that my mom was saying prayers in her heart in moments that it got silent between us, like I was, and I felt it. That's what I felt God telling me was... Like, in this moment, just for an example, I picked her up, and she's got, like, her scarf on, her her coat, and her, she had, she had a bald head, and she had her, um, like, a beanie on top. One that was hand-knitted, um, I believe from her sister, actually. Um, and we're driving down the interstate, and... We do a little small talk, you know, the, the usual small talk, and then it just got really quiet, and I was watching her look out the window, and she was looking at the trees, and, you know, the leaves, they still weren't on the trees, like, some leaves were kind of hanging out still, hanging around, because it was late winter, early spring, so... It wasn't like there was much budding tree tree buds going on yet. There weren't new leaves, so it was like a lot of old, dead leaves that were left over and bare trees, right, with their limbs stretching towards the sky in the cold air, morning air. And um, so I'm just looking at her, you know, as she's looking out the window, and I get these thoughts of like, I wonder what she's thinking, and. You know, I was asking God in that moment, and he was sharing with me that she was having very deep thoughts about her life. Um, things that she knew she wasn't going to be able to do, you know, for, for much longer or ever do again. And then different regrets that she had, but also, like, the deepness and thankfulness of life that she got to live. So... But there was more sorrow in this moment than anything. And I did this thing where I, I took like a, a mental picture in my mind. I do that a lot. With really deep, important moments. And I can still see her, you know? looking out that window, and she was sad. She was really sad. She was very sad because she was thinking about she, like God let me know that she was wondering how, how much longer she had on earth, and she was just sad, you know. And she was trying to be really strong for everybody. And she was strong. And she is my hero because she had so much strength in her last days, you guys. Like, she really did. So, but 
I just heard God saying that she was like looking at the trees and the grass and just thinking about how that she would die before some of those trees would die and she was worried in her heart if she would die before spring would happen because spring was her favorite time of year and it was like this knowing though that she knew that her death was close that's what God was revealing to me in that moment is that God was actually telling her that she didn't have much longer and she was having to accept that you know because she was such a fighter she was willing to do whatever it took to stay on this earth longer to spend more time with her kids and grandchildren and you know just in her and I because we had just reconciled a couple months before so we were trying to get as much time together as possible and it was hard it was emotional you know um so yeah, it's like God told me in that moment, he was sharing with her that she didn't have much longer. And he did tell me that too. Like, I knew that my mom wasn't going to live another year. I don't know how to explain it, but he told me to take in every moment and to encourage her. And so even in that car ride, we had conversations of things, plans that we were planning to make. We both talked about how she, she told me she wanted me to take her clothes shopping. <laughs> and she was complimenting my style. And she thought I dressed really cute. And she wanted me to help her pick out some clothes. And so we talked about that. We talked about like going to some restaurants that she wanted to take me to. And she wanted to try out because she was a chef. So she would talk a lot about food. And, and then she talked about... Um, going to a concert to go see Celine Dion like she wanted her and I to go together and we knew these plans weren't weren't gonna happen but it's like it's like we were both being really strong for each other in that moment expressing how much you know we wanted to spend more time together and that we were thankful to Jesus that he gave us these time that time that we had and she had told me that God had been answering her prayers a lot and back then at that time and she was so excited she's like gosh Jack Jesus is really answering so many of my prayers and so much so much good is happening for me and and then she said she prayed about our reconciliation and I told her the same and then we I mean we had so many deep talks like so many deep talks where we were, we were both crying and wailing and we would just pause in moments and I knew her thoughts and I know that God was sharing my thoughts with her because it was like she could read my mind like she didn't have to look at me she knew what I was feeling in moments without me having to express it to her and our conversations flowed very very spirit-led and yeah I was just thinking about um how like the most important thing is when someone that you love is dying and you're near them, like, you feel it. And it's so important to take in those moments, you know, and not waste that time with your loved ones. And it's like nobody can take this away from me. Nobody can take away the knowledge and the love and the beautiful, deep revelations that God shared with my mom and I in these moments as she was dying, you know, um, just how important love is. And it doesn't matter, you guys, the strife or whatever has happened in a relationship um, between two people. It's, it's so deep. It's hard to explain. But, you know, when God gets to reunite two people, 
and one of them is dying, regardless of strife or anything that's ever happened between these two people, all that God is pouring his knowledge into these hearts, all that really matters to him in, this, in these moments is that they make peace with one another and that they show love. And it's like, it's forgiveness. It's, that's what brings on the healing and, and creates this beautiful moment between these two souls. And, um, yeah, like, that's what I learned in my life is it doesn't matter what strife or anything that's hindered two people from being together. You know, like, if one of them is dying and God brings them together to reunite in those moments, they're going to learn that love is everything. And no, nobody can take that away from you in that moment to know that all that matters to God in that moment is that they show each other love and I just really learned a lot being around my mom and the other people who were dying at that time you know at the cancer place um at the cancer facility like where people were going to get treatment and chemotherapy and it's it's this deep knowing that nothing matters but love, love, and forgiveness. That's what matters, and that's what brings healing, and that's what changes lives, and that's the whole test of life. <sighs> Sometimes I wish I could go back, even though I know that I used my time wisely and I said everything that my heart could have said, but I still wish that I could go back and have said even more and have poured even more love, like, and, you know, I'm not beating myself up over it because I know that I said everything that I, I needed to say and we made perfect peace and there's healing, but it's like the soul doesn't feel satisfied in this body. I truly believe that you really don't get to that place of satisfaction of showing enough love. Like, I don't think it's possible to feel like you've showed enough. I don't know how to explain it. Um, even though I have the peace, you know, the beautiful gift of peace and the joy that, that came from that time too, I, I've learned so much more after just two years, after she's been gone. Um, just even deeper, 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 deeper lessons of how love is important. And if people could imagine themselves sitting with someone else and imagine that they're dying, if people are walking around with that mentality, that mindset, then this world would be a completely different place and people would be feeling what truly matters. Like... <laughs> And, and there would be so much healing in hearts. Anyways. Just felt like sharing that. I hope it encourages you in some way. And if you've taken anything from this video, go and sit with your loved ones, your parents, your children, you know, whoever else in your family. Like if there is strife, pray to God, ask him to help you understand what your part is to heal that strife and what you can do to love them and pray for them.